How's it going everybody? Nerds Rising here and welcome back to the Nerd Cave. In today's video, I have some absolutely incredible battles for you guys featuring a triple bug, triple shadow theme team in the open Great League. And folks, not only is it triple shadow and triple bug, these battles are also played at 3100 ELO, where the battles are very sweaty, the opponents are all extremely skilled, and really there's not a lot of spice being run out here in this ELO range. So buckle up folks, this is gonna be an absolutely crazy video. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I had two positive sets with the team and won way more battles than I thought I would. I truly thought I was just gonna get completely stomped into the ground and dropped like 300 ELO, but I think I only lost about 125 ELO on the day. And you top that off with two positive sets. It just really, really was surprising how well this team did. Again, it is not a good team. Do not use it, please, if you're looking to climb. I think all three of the Pokemon actually do have some play, but together they're just way too weak to a lot of common meta threats. But let's get into it, guys. Buckle up again. This is gonna be completely ridiculous here and we pick up a terrible lead here in the first battle. Quagsire into the Shadow Beedrill, and Quagsire beats our entire team, so I kind of really can't switch out here. So what I do is I just throw, to, throw on the CMP tie here to a potential Stone Edge. I'm just gonna fully sack the Beedrill Hill. I get some nice chip damage, and at this point, I am fine with letting the Beedrill go down. They actually bait, and they have a Shadow Charizard in the back. You've gotta be kidding me. They are completely core breaking my entire team right now, and I do build up to a potential Rock Tomb, Fortress does have access to Rock Tomb. The opponent doesn't know we're not running it, so they do come in a shield, and I actually get another Mirror Shot off as well, and I get the attack debuff, so this is definitely not over. This is a really rough situation because the Shadow Zard has a ton of energy, Quag has a ton of energy, and I'm just gonna bring back in the Beedrill again, fully sacrifice it, and at this point, they can probably just go for a Dragon Claw. Despite the debuff, this is still gonna KO. They do KO, and now I need Shadow Scissor to basically clutch this out for me. I am gonna have to shield here, I don't believe they're making two moves, so they're going to full send the Blast Burn here. And unfortunately, the Quag does have energy. They come back in, they force my last shield, and now we do have energy, but the Shadow Scissor has no shields. And Shadow Scissor without shields, guys, is just really not that great. We have to have them have something super weak to us in the back. And it actually is a Frost Last, guys. We're at the back to back Night Slashes. They are now at the Avalanche. It's a CMP tie. And the question is is this non stab Night Slash going to be enough? And it is enough. We take out the Frost last from half health. And that was my first battle with the team, guys. I could not believe that I won that battle as we pick up a defense Deoxys lead here in the next battle. Pretty nice lead for us in the two shield. Obviously, they can Psycho Boost and dip here, which is what they're going to do. We do have to shield that. And they bring in a Dugong here. Now, Dugong, you would think our backline does pretty well against Dugong. But unfortunately, Dugong is just so incredibly bulky that you really don't want to switch directly into it. So I do chip. They actually no shield that, and I'm able to snipe with some bug bites there. So I deny all their energy. They had just gotten to the drill run there, and they have a Shadow Lowland Sand Slash in the back. And this is still not over for sure. Unfortunately, uh, we are down a shield, but Fortress is the bulkiest Pokemon on our team, and it can tank a drill run, as you see there. Not comfortably, but it does tank it. We do bait there. They switch back into the Defense Deoxys, and I believe I do go for the Earthquake here. This should be KOing. Do they want to give up their last shield? And no, they do not. And at this point... All we have to do is just come in again with the Beedrill, fully sacrifice it. We do get the one turn lag, unfortunately, but they do take us out. And now we're just going to bullet punch down this Sand Slash for the win. They're not going to make two moves. They recognize it and they surrender. And we take two battles, guys, already. I actually had a positive set in my first set with this team. I could not believe it. We pick up a wiggly tough lead here in the next battle and Charmers are beautiful to see for this team because our entire team beats Charmers and they switch into a Metacham and they no shield it, which is just perfect, guys. I basically already won this battle unless they have like a Talon Flame in the back because we can just shield that up, farm all the way down. They cannot bring back in the Wigglytuff and it doesn't matter what's aligned to the Wigglytuff because again, our whole team beats Wigglytuff and there is a Licky Tongue in the back and Licky Tongue is gonna have to eat two X Scissors here. They do shield, probably not gonna shield the next one. And at this point, I'll probably just bring in the Fortress here and yeah, I do actually catch the Body Slam as well. Absolutely savage. And at this point, the opponent should probably just be top lefting. They don't know we have a Shadow Scissor in the back, so they're probably not going to top left. But uh, yeah, we can just basically go for a Mirror Shot here. The Earthquake is not enough to one-shot, which is why I go for the Mirror Shot, just in case I get the attack debuff. And now I'm going to go straight for the EQ here, guys. They're probably not going to shield it, recognizing we still have the Beedrill. They let it go, and now Licky Tongue is just way, way too low. They do farm us down, and as you're going to see, the opponent is actually throwing energy after seeing the scissor and they actually go for another body slam as well i believe and we are going to live that one as well we're going to no shield it 
and we get the win there again with the triple bug team you love to see it as we lead into the next battle here we have a licky tongue on the lead this time which is a little bit rough we definitely would like to see this against our back line more so the opponent actually over farms which is amazing i'm gonna try to catch the move here they do hold on to their energy and they have a ember or an ember canto nine tails excuse me in the back and folks this is what i was saying in the intro this team is just far too weak to too many things if you see a fire type it's basically a guaranteed loss for the team as you see these embers are just completely shredding through my entire team fortunately we can hit this for neutral with the poison jabs i will be able to farm down here but we have taken so much damage we've already lost our scissor their licky tongue is still healthy and this is just looking really really rough fortunately we do actually catch them into the cmp tie there they should have just held onto their energy there and farmed down but fortress just has a lot of work to do because this licky tongue is still very very healthy and unless they're extremely weak to it in the back which they're not we're probably just going to lose the battle unfortunately it is an azu and even though we do resist ice beam and play rough earthquake is not enough to ko there so basically i felt like my win con there was to bait the mirror shot have them shield it and then land the eq but as you see the azu is still not even in earthquake range they're going to shield this up anyway but even if this landed they would still comfortably live that and their licky tongue still had some health in the back so yeah not really much i could have done there but uh gg to the opponent as we pick up another dream lead is it charm and it is charm like i said before it is just absolutely incredible when you see a charmer on this team and they're actually running aba fairy which is really really going to be a rough time for the opponent because not only is this aba fairy but our back line actually does even better against the charmalilla nine tails than the b drill so i can easily just stay in here take this azu out and they actually double shield as well and now i'm just going to bring in the fortress and probably commit do i commit to an aggressive farm down i can't remember if i commit to a farm down or if I throw the uh, mirror shot just before they go out go down and they actually pivot into their back Pokemon and it is an Umbreon actually and this is just game over. These bug bites and earthquakes are going to completely shred the Umbreon and as you're going to see Fortress is not bulky by any means but it does have some respectable bulk. I would say like average like if it was a non-shadow it would have like average bulk but for a shadow it is a fairly bulky shadow. As you see we are tanking these snarls they're going to be forced to throw again and now we can just save everything for the scissor. I will not be shielding this whatsoever. And once the opponent sees the scissor, they're definitely going to be instantly top lefting as they know they're about to get completely destroyed. <laughs> they just instantly top left. They see the shadow scissor and they're like, F no, I am out of here. And that's a good game. So next battle, we pick up a very nice lead. Buzzwool into our B drill. And the opponent does safe switch into a water gun lantern. So don't have a great response to this. I do bait. It's a very safe bait there. And I do catch the Surf onto the Fortress. But I believe if the opponent wants to, they probably can shield and farm me all the way down, unfortunately. I think I do shield once here. But as you, you're going to see, the Water Guns are chunking me quite a bit. And I probably am going to lose Switch Advantage here. So I'm just going to full send it here. At the very least, I want to make sure that I grab their last shield. In the process, I do grab their last shield. I do get them low as well. And now I think I should actually be able to come in with a Beedrill and farm them all the way down. I am going to have to commit one shield, but I think I should be able to farm them all the way down. And it's all going to depend on what they have in the back. If they're weak to the scissor, maybe we can sweep here. And they have a Carbink in the back. I go for the drill run here, and I believe I will aggressively bring in the scissor now. And I'm going to try to catch the opponent into a CMP tie onto their superpower here. And I do catch them in a CMP tie here. Now, if you're the opponent, you have to undercharge this because what's going to happen if they don't undercharge it? If they take me out, I'm going to come in with a drill, farm them down, and then drill run the Carbink. And that's exactly what happens. They take me out. I have the move loaded. And we're going to drill run the Carbink, and that's going to be a GG. So I think what the opponent should have done there, probably fully no bubble that superpower and then let themselves get very low to the point where my Beedrill couldn't farm them down much and not have a move loaded. So next battle, another defense Deoxys on the lead. Again, the opponent's probably going to be just chipping and dipping us. This is typically what the Deoxys leads did, and they're actually staying in here after, after throwing the Psycho Boost. So what I'm going to do here is throw my X Scissor, get the shield. They are now at the second, and I'm going to catch the debuff Psycho Boost onto my Scissor. Typically, I do try to safe swap the Scissor if I can, just because it's a bit safer. Like, for example, if we would have switched into the Fortress here, this Skarmory would just completely have annihilated our poor fortress. But the Scissor, at the very least, can hit back. As you see, we get the Skarmory below half. And this is still actually looking really, really awkward. Fortunately, they are fairly low, but all we have is resisted moves here. We have double resisted Bug Bites, single resisted Mirror Shots, and single resisted Earthquakes here. So this is looking really, really rough. I am going to massively over farm, hopefully get them low, and then take them out with a Mirror Shot. But unfortunately, 
I still don't think that they're in mere shot range and they're just barely not. They pivot out. They have a Nitto Queen in the back. And at this point, guys, it's, a, it's just going to be a baiting game. People don't really like to bait that much in this elo range. So I kind of recognize that. And I actually do bait. They shield it. And now Nitto Queen gets vanquished with an Earthquake. And the Skarmory is very low in the back. And I think Beedrill is going to close this game out. I actually do wait a turn there to make sure they don't catch. And they recognize it's over and they surrender. So GG to the opponent there. Really close battle there. That just basically came down to a 50-50 bait call. And fortunately, we do get the call correctly. Now, in this battle, I do actually safe switch into the Fortress here. Just recognizing a Body Slam would still do so much damage onto the uh, Scissor if we caught there. And they actually do answer us with a Metacham. Now, this is going to be a very close matchup. They are on the Power Up Punch, unfortunately. I wasn't 100% sure if I could make it to the Earthquake. I knew I could have made it, but I thought the opponent was going to throw. And sure enough, they do throw the Pup. So if I would have committed to the Earthquake there, I wouldn't have got that damage off. But now, they actually Pup right away. So I should actually be able to come in with Beedrill here and form up to five and throw on the CMP tie to another pup here. And we do just that. We have some ex extra energy banked here. We take out the Metacham and they come back in with the Dragonair and we're going to get their shield here with this X Scissor. And now we have a two to one shield Shadow Scissor in the back. They're going to stay in. They're going to get our shield, but they're going to get farmed down. So they're going to have to pivot here. What's going to be in the back? And it's actually a Chrysalia. And unfortunately, Chrysalia is extremely bulky. So it's going to take multiple night slashes plus the bullet punches and if they potentially get a moon bl moon blast debuff this could get rough and they do get the debuff i was thinking in, in real time you have got to be kidding me the one in ten chance they get the debuff and this could potentially be a win con for them so what i need to do is i have to get this night slash off it's not going to ko i have to try to farm down and i'm just able to farm down and if they would have somehow farmed me down there, they would have won that battle. But fortunately, the Poison Jabs get the job done. We farmed down the rest of their team with the Scissor, and that's a good game. So that was a sweaty one, guys. I just about threw my phone there when they got that Moonblast debuff. I was like, you have got to be kidding me. There is no way. But fortunately, we pull off the win anyway. We see a Metacham lead here in the next battle. They're staying in, so they're clearly core broken by this Beedrill. And they go for the Ice Punch here. They're not going to make another move, and they have a Wall Rain in the back. So here... I'm recognizing opponents don't like to throw one right away. I'm going to throw one more Poison Jab, and I'm going to catch the Icicle Spear onto my Scissor. And they are at six here, so they're going to be four away from the next one. So I probably will have to commit a shield here, but that is totally fine. I will let this go. Actually, no, I'm going to let this go. Calling, I can live it and still farm down, and I do farm down. Really nice call by me, and uh, Nerds Rising in recorded time here probably would have shielded that, but they actually have a Diggersby in the back, and maybe I should have shielded because now... It's looking like this Diggersby could potentially farm me down. They do farm me down. I get the one turn lag as well. I don't get the poison jab through. And are they on Scorching Sands? No, they're on Fire Punch. And guys, this is looking really, really rough. Fire Punch doesn't actually one shot from full health, but it does do quite a bit of damage. They come back with a many. They were going to make a move. I'm forced to get my mirror shot off. And now, basically my only win con in this battle, guys, is to get this mirror shot debuff and then farm them down. And if I don't get this debuff, the Fire Punch will KO. But I get the debuff. The opponent has to be so mad right now. RNG was not in my favor this the last battle. But in this battle, RNG actually won me that game. As you see, Fire Punch doesn't KO. We bug bite down the Diggers B and we take the win. So that was absolutely crazy. I'm showing you this battle right here, guys. Just because I don't want people to think like, oh, Nerds Rising showing all these wins. Like, he clearly couldn't have won that many battles. Well, you are absolutely correct, guys. I had a ton of battles like this where there was just literally no chance whatsoever. Look at the look at these incinerates, guys, on the scissor. Look at this next incinerate here. That does over half of my health. And I just I can't shield that. I just really can't shield that. Otherwise, he just sweeps my team. My only chance is that the opponent, for whatever reason, doesn't shield this X Scissor. Literally, if he would have if he would shield this. I'm pretty sure he could just take my fortress out before I even got to a move. But check this out, guys. I'm actually going to make this close. The opponent no shields that. We do actually take out the Talon Flame. They've got a Metacham in the back, and we have a fortress. We fully wall their energy unless they're running Dynamic Punch. They're not running it, but check it out. They Psychic debuff me there again. RNG. Like, come on, RNG. If you're going to see what's in the back, guys, if that psychic debuff there didn't land, I actually might have won this battle. Check it out. It's actually going to be, I believe, a superior in the back. We farm them down, and we're just so low that we're not going to be able to survive enough, excuse me, long enough to do enough damage to take them out. I was almost at the back to back mirror shots there as well. So, like, one more mirror shot and a bunch more bug bites, plus the little bit of poison jab damage from the B drill. 
I actually might have been able to beat that Talonflame lead there if it wasn't for that Psychic debuff. But hey, you know what? The RNG gods sometimes smile upon you, and other times they just completely destroy you. And unfortunately, that battle was just RNG that got me. But I mean, really, I had no right to win the battle anyway because it was a Talonflame lead. But anyway, we pick up a Sableye lead there. I say switch into the Scissor, and this is why I like to run Trailblaze, guys, because Trailblaze does a ton of damage on the Azu. They're not going to be able to farm down. They're going to be forced to throw, and that is totally fine by me. We're going to absolutely allow that. We're going to come back in with a B-Draw, I believe, and farm them all the way down. And we do win CMP against the Sableye. No, we're actually going to come in with the Fortress here and commit to a very aggressive Bug Bite down. And I believe in this battle, I miscounted. I thought this was just going to be a play rough. It's actually a Hydro Pump, and our Fortress takes massive damage. They have a Venusaur in the back. This is going to be very, very close, guys. They're going for the farm down here. If I can get this, this move through the shields, and I do, I might be able to do this now. Basically, they're going to throw the Frenzy here, and it's going to be for the opponent. Basically, they're going to have to Shadow Claw me down before I make back-to-back -back moves. That's their only win con. They should not be throwing energy here because they're not going to be able to outpace me. And I just have to make the back-to-back. -back, and they have actually just got to the back-to-back -back themselves. But Beedrill wins CMP. The opponent recognizes it. And we beat another lost lead with this team. You absolutely love to see it. Guys, these battles are flying by, by the way like crazy crazy fast i think i have these at two times speed so bear with me as i just like stumble through the commentary here well we picked up a very nice lead into the buzzwool but unfortunately the opponent answers our our um <clears throat> our lead there with a jellicent safe switch i cannot speak and jellicent is a really really rough thing for this basically entire team to see and if you're wondering why i bring in the fortress there instead of the scissor that is simply just because the Fortress can actually tank two Surfs, as you saw there, whereas the Scissor can definitely not. It really can't hardly even take one Surf, and despite the fact that the Night Slashes are super effective, it's just really not a very good matchup. So what I do here is, I do get a Shield Advantage, I do lose Switch, unfortunately, but I'm able to get an Energy Head Start on the Beedrill, and the opponent has a Shadow Lowland Sand Slash in the back, so we're going to get the Shield here. And I believe we're actually going to make the opponent throw here. We're not going to switch into the scissor right away. No, we're actually going to shield this up. And then maybe try to catch onto the scissor on Ice Punch. The opponent switches back out. I bank a move. And again, guys, like you saw in one of the previous battles with Buzzwool, I catch the opponent in another CMP tie, which is perfect. They have to undercharge this there. Because if they leave this amount of health, I will actually farm down and win CMP against the Sand Slash. And that's exactly what happens, guys. I think they realized that they were going to lose CMP, so they just go for the Shadow Claw there. But yeah, the opponent there, again, falls into the CMP tie trap with my Scissor, and I win that game. Improbably, despite them having a Jellicent. So we take a win there, and we have a Swampert lead here in the next battle. Swampert is another one of those leads that's absolutely terrible. The opponent actually plays into a CMP tie there. I think they were worried that I was going to try to catch, which is why they didn't throw right away. But Shadow Beedrill does actually live a Hydro, so I just get the shield advantage there. I'm basically just going to sack the Beedrill once again and put it all on the back line here with two shields. I do have to shield their move here. They're staying in. I CMP tie them here with the Trailblaze. They probably think this is a Night Slash. They no shield it, realizing they could live a Night Slash, but they do not live that Trailblaze. And guys, what do they have in the back? They have a Gligar. And again, I'm going to be playing into these CMP ties every single time because when you're running a glassy shadow team like this, you have to basically maximize your energy at all times. And if you can catch opponents in CMP ties, that basically doesn't allow them to over farm at all. And it allows you to have a ton of extra energy when you come out of these matchups. And as you see, that extra energy allows me to get to another Night Slash against the A Slash in the back. And now Fortress is easily going to make the EQ here. We can tank the move. I think actually the probably two drill runs will KO. But at this point, I can just go for the mirror shot here. And even if I don't get the debuff... I have enough fast move pressure left in this game to just farm down the A-Slash. As you see, Bug Bites and the Mirror Shot get this thing fairly low. And we definitely have at least like one or two bullet punches worth of health on our Scissor. So I believe I just come in with the Scissor here. And I think I get at least two bullet punches off. Yeah, I get two bullet punches off. And then one Poison Jab takes care of the A-Slash just before they make the Ice Punch. And that is a good game. And guys, this is the absolute dream lead here. Superior gets fully walled by our entire team, basically. And they stay switched into a Sableye, which is totally fine. Because in this matchup, I don't really need switch advantage. Because, again, it does not matter where we align the Superior. Our entire team is going to absolutely destroy it. And they probably won't double shield. They should just about live a Night Slash here. And they recognize it beautifully beautifully played by the opponent and they are actually going to take me out here but that is totally fine i will come back in with the beedrill farm all the way down just because beedrill up energy typically typically excuse me 
tends to be a bit better than Fortress, just because of its nice coverage. I play into a CMP tie once again with a Swampert. They probably thought they would win CMP there, but they do not. They know shield it, thinking, surely Nerds Rising cannot have another answer to my Superior. Surely Superior can sweep here, and Superior cannot sweep as we, we fully hard counter it with the fortress in the back you absolutely love to see it and guys we have two more battles here this one is absolutely insane as we see a knockdown on the lead we're going to go for a cmp tie here the opponent does over farm and they probably actually will shield it they do shield it recognizing i probably am very weak to this knockdown if i'm staying in they do over farm correctly there and again, we're putting it all on the back line, guys. Shadow Scissor up two shields is so, so good. And the opponent is staying in here. They're going to shield. They're going to throw the move here. We do shield. And they're still staying in. They must be very weak to bug steal in the back. They shield our Night Slash, guys. They are so weak in the back. Oh my gosh, what's it going to be in the back? We actually are going to fully farm this knockdown down. They don't switch out. They give, us, give me a massive energy head start. And they're waiting, guys. What are they about to come in with here? And they come in with a Swampert. I throw just before they make the Hydro. And this Trailblaze is easily going to be destroying the Swampert. And they have a Carbink in the back. And Shadow Scissor is just absolutely destroying this entire team. I could stay in and probably just wreck them with those Bullet Punches there. Considering they would be double buffed. But I just decided to play it safe. I cut it with a Fortress. And I make it to the Mirror Shot on the CMP tie. And that's a good game. And guys, in the last battle here. Again, I just want to reiterate to you guys. Do not use this team for this reason right here, because if you see something like this on the lead, you just insta lose. I do stay in just for fun, just to see if I can pull off any shenanigans, but as you see, the opponent is recognizing that I am extremely weak to this, and they're shielding appropriately, and all they're gonna do here is just fully farm down my entire team. They take both shields from me there, and if they shield this Night Slash, I just lose, and I believe that any opponent in any ELO range that has seen that I have two bug types, is easily going to shield that, and that's exactly what they do. They shield it, and I top left because I had absolutely no win con, and that is going to be all she wrote, folks, and is it the last battle? Actually, my screen just froze for a second. Hang on just a second. I, there actually might be one more battle. No, that is the last battle. For some reason, my thing just usually goes to my little Pikachu Libre spread in the back, but uh, anyway, guys, that is the last battle. Thank you so much for watching. I had a ton of fun using this team. Again, as I mentioned, please don't use it. I think if you wanted to use maybe one or two of these Pokemon, I think probably the MVP of the team is the Shadow Beedrill. Shadow Beedrill is very versatile, and it has some actually pretty nice matchups versus the meta. It does very well into obviously all the fairies, and it actually does very well into Metacham as well, because the counters are double resisted, and you do just outpace them to heavy hitting moves, whereas you can live an Ice Punch, whereas they really cannot live an Exeter very well without getting farmed down afterwards. So uh, Beedrill definitely worth building if you don't have one. Shadow Scissor, I absolutely love Shadow Scissor. It's so, so glassy, but it is actually pretty good as well. And then Fortress, I think Fortress is just a worse version of Scissor. It is actually kind of bulky. I, I think it is a cool spice pick, but definitely not one you need to build. But uh, that's going to be all she wrote for today, folks. Thank you again so much for watching. I truly hope you enjoyed this video. I definitely enjoyed running this team. But that being said, if you are new to the channel and you are not subscribed, please consider subscribing because the more subscribers we can get, the more Pokemon my wife will let me play.